would looking at uh, the second issue on the front burner this morning is the issue of uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria saying it has established policies to address persistent depreciation of the Naira. And of course, we're going to have Mukta Mohammed join us this morning to make sense of all of the conversation. Now, moving forward, uh, it might also interest you to know that. Uh, you know, the Central Bank of Nigeria and her director had mentioned some issues. They say the local currency was currently exchanging at 414 naira to a dollar at the official market rate, but 751 naira to a dollar at the parallel market. So when you have different markets, a statement uh, comes a few days after the Association of Borough Exchange Operators of Nigeria criticized foreign exchange policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria for adversely imparting the Naira stability across all markets. Well, I'm now being joined by Mukta Mohammed to make sense of all of this. Thank you so much. He's a developmental economist. Thank you. Uh, let's get straight to you know the conversation. Within the period of seven years, the Naira depreciated by 52.52% against the U.S. dollar, how visible are these policies established by the Apex Bank and the fact that they said, hey, this is what we're doing? Thank you so much, uh, compliments of the seasons. I think the only policy in the past seven years that the CBN has done that have had a, a positive impact in the exchange has been the import-export window that was created when the market went as high as um, 501. That was in 20, I think, 2016. So after that, we've not had any policy that have had a positive impact. Well, that policy came in, it dragged the exchange rate back to about 360. We enjoyed that 360 until we got to the um, COVID crisis, um, the lockdown and all that. Then the Russia and Ukraine crisis also. Since then, I think this, the CBN has been on a loss on what to do as re regard the exchange rate because um, uh, uh, monetary policy seems not to be working. So they were trying to use administrative policies, um, five naira for every one dollar to attract investment. But the core uh, uh, policy that can drive your exchange rate to, for, to, 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 to stability has to do with attracting foreign investors, both portfolio and direct foreign investors. At the moment, they are not achieving that at all. Rather, we've seen that shrink to about a um, 90 something percent so definitely uh, we've not been attracting uh, effects into our economy and uh, despite the high price of crude would which have been to our advantage to to boost up our reserve and attract more effects into our country because of the oil thief one and also because of the um the subsidy regime we're not able to enjoy that also so definitely uh, the policy of the cbn has not worked since the other first one worked every other policy has just been like a um, trial and error uh let's further look at you know some of the issues and i'm sure that uh, you're very much aware that the local currency was weakened by about 53 percent and then external debt rose also by 288 percent and uh, the question is what exactly is the implication of this what does this mean for the economy <laughs> Well, we are already seeing the implication of that on the economy. Inflation has gone high. Um, CBN have high interest rates, and that means that small businesses or even big businesses are not or, um, able to borrow at a good exchange rate. So cost of living has gone up, and it will keep going up as we get those policies. So definitely uh, what we have seen in that, in, especially in the area of borrowing, especially when the, the ways and the means that the CBN uh, policy, whereby federal government can borrow from the CBN, and it has gone high with about 20 some, 20, 21 point something trillion. And again, those 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 that means that CBN have to bring in more currency print into more currency into circulation that also have affected the inf interest rate that have also have, uh, have got up to inflation uh, cost inflation to be high and especially when some of these uh, um, um, borrowing are not meant for productive venture they are meant to pay salaries to pay allowances for for both civil service civil servant and political appointees so definitely um those are why they, they, we've seen those um, um, the, 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 the economy not responding to every policy. And again, you mustn't also forget that um, 
Nigerian depends about 80 to 70 percent of our goods are being imported into this country and so when you depend on that also you realize that you are not any more fx and then you need to source for it the the primary market which is um mostly from cbn they're not able to meet legitimate demands the most times cbn are only able to meet like um 50 to 60 percent and when they meet that is about school fees and traveling allowances they are not able to meet up demand for the manufacturing sector so all these have been why you've seen those um, increase in the exchange rate and also the high inflationary figures we have seen in the economy thus far hmm. so it's also responsible for why you know our debts increased when, when you look at our debt uh, uh, our debt increase has to do with more with uh, projects according to this uh, to the federal government they borrow to fund a lot of our projects and so that's why people like us have said that this project a uh, project that have uh, economic impact on the econ uh, on, uh, on on the nation so what you needed to do was to use that as a collateral to attract ppp public private partnership whereby the private sector come and drive this sector and then they will build and operate for the for a numbers of years so that will reduce what you have to borrow to be part of it so you will you just be using the project as your counterpart funding giving them like 25 to 30 years to recoup their money just like what we are doing in the in the airport the new airport that we uh, were constructing all over the country but unfortunately i think um the government are not yield to that so they've seen borrowing as an easy way of um, solving some of their promises, especially those that they made during the electoral campaign. And so that's why we've seen Nigerian debt come this high as, as like never before. But also, uh, I mean, in the bid to manage the value of the Naira, the CBN had introduced a couple of policies, a uh, number of them. Such was uh, the stopping of 41 items from assessing Forex, you know, at the official market. They also offered five Naira for every one dollar of funds remitted to Nigeria through internal money uh, transfer organization. They also banned the supply of forex to borrowers of change, among others. Now, none of this seemed to have assured Naira stability. Uh, <laughs> how do you respond to this? All these are administrative um, uh, um, procedures. They're not monetary policies. Monetary policies are what drive investment into your economy not administrative policies. So now, monetary policies are what will bring foreign investors into your economy and they will come in with the dollars and then they will beef up your res reserve. Now, when you look at most of these policies, they are administrative policies towards creating stability internally, but they are not going to attract investors into your market. Now, let's look at the 41 ban item. Those items were banned, but those items were not banned from being imported into Nigeria. So what you see, and then you look at this 41 ban item, you begin to look at these are items that Nigerians generally use. So Nigeria still wants this item, and the, the people that are importing this item into the country will go to the parallel market, and they will get this exchange, and then they will import this item. Because demand and supply now, please, that's why you see the exchange rate in the parallel market went up, because a lot of the 41 ban items, which most Nigerians are going to use, where, where I mean, they still being patronized. So the demand for this effort to bring in this good into this country was high, and so that you saw the exchange rate volatility comes in there to 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 play. When you look at um, uh, the 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 other, I mean, suppose of five naira for a dollar, you see that, and then you also see the other policy of um, paying um, uh, if you come to money transfer or Western Union. You know, they have to pay you in dollars and then you won't weigh the exchange rate of just getting five naira per dollar by and by receiving your money in dollar and taking it to the parallel market for the nigerian the diaspora they now see that sending the money in dollar receiving it through the western union in dollar and then going to the parallel market is more uh, is more profitable for them than going to the bank and getting the five naira especially when you have to go through administrative buckle next to get this five naira. remember this five naira is going to be paid by cbn so that policy also doesn't help the other policy that should help with the one with the brutal change which i think it would have helped if we have done this earlier but like I said, it's never is it, 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 never too late to do a good policy. The Burundi change have been the one that have drive the exchange rate to where it is now because of 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 of, of infringement. That I remember before now, every week 
200 million dollars were released to this below the change to drive stability in the exchange rates and they never did it rather instead of exchanging for between three i think at that time was supposed to exchange for like 360 or 365 they really change started exchanging from government at collecting from government at 360 and selling for 400 450 and that is why cbn said we cannot continue to do this and they stopped that 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 and that cross caused a lot of um um, um 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 supply challenge into the market and then we saw they say now the problem is when cbn stopped that policy of giving it to the Burundi change they did not create a window for people that usually assess the Burundi change to be able to assess the fx market so those same people need to patronize the Burundi change no matter what because of the slimless nature in assessing fx with the Burundi change and that also comes up the issue of demand and supply comes up and demand was high supply was low so the exchange rate went up uh, just as we close this conversation down, uh, one of the policies that, uh, you know, the central bank had said that, hey, this is what we're doing to ensure that the Naira does not dis depreciate, uh, you know, more than it is now. It said uh, they highlighted the R R RT200 FX program as such policy that has been put because, you know, uh, there's also been, you know, speculation or probability or postulation that uh, we probably might be having 1,000 naira to the dollar. And they say, hey, that's not going to be the case because we have such policies as the RT200 FX program. So how do you respond to the RT200 FX program? Well, first of all, I need to uh, um, um, currently say about the people that are saying the exchange rate will get to 1,000. Um, that is artificial. It's not backed any economic data or any economic policy. It's being driven by speculators. Speculators have driven the Naira to where it is now. Speculators are trying to drive the Naira to to where they want it to be for their own selfish gain. Um, up to this moment, you realize that the World Bank have not come out to say the Naira is overpriced or underpriced. That tells you that definitely the Naira is overpriced as it stands now. So for me, I, I am not among those uh, um, um, school of thought that thinks um, the exchange rate will go to 1,000 Naira on basis on what? What are, the, what are those bases that makes you feel that the exchange rate will go to 1,000 Naira? Now, coming, up, coming back to the RX200, I think that's a policy that is working. But you see, for any policy to work, it will take time because it took time for us to get to where we are now. So it's going to take time for us to begin to see the settling down of those policies. Remember, this RX200 policy was just introduced by the CBN for 200 SMEs, which by they will provide the, 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 the framework, either especially those that are going to be importing goods outside the shore of this country. And I think it's working based on the data that's been given to us by CBN. That's why I say based on the data that's been given to us by CBN. So it seems to be working, but it will take time for us to begin to see those impacts in, in this policy. And why it's going to take time is because they, if your monetary policies are doing things that they ought to do, and the physical side are not doing anything, you will not see the synergy, so you will not see the result. Now, in the first place, it is not in the place of CBN to, to get themselves involved in uh, uh, issuing of soft loan or loan to, to, to SMEs. It's not the place of CBN. So CBN is beginning to double into areas that they are not supposed to double into because the physical side is not creating the policy that will attract SMEs into the economy or drive SMEs to do more import uh, export outside the shore of this country to attract FS into the economy. So they are going into where it's not theirs on prices. So for me, I think that's where the challenge is. is. That's why we are not seeing the results from all these policies. But with time, especially when the physical side begin to come out with policies that will complement what the monetary policy committee is doing, they will begin to see those results. Let me give you an example. An example is in the UK. Now, there's going to be a hike in electricity tariff during the during winter. And what happened? The physical side said, you know what? Every household, we are going to provide them 2,500 pounds every month to, to drive down uh, the cost of electricity. And that also will tickle down to the manufacturing sector. That is the physical side. The monetary okay. side, what were they doing? Most they still hike the rate. And so cost of borrowing goes up. So definitely, once the physical is doing, then the, 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 the monetary has to, to, to have well, a synergy it, it, with them. It's a good thing that you have said that the policy has 
good intentions, but uh, if it does have good intentions, one will begin to ask that why would you know the World Bank be concerned about asking the CBN to review the policy, really, especially when it's causing more problems for the foreign exchange for the country. But Mukta Mohammed, we have to go uh, because we need to join the newsroom at nine o'clock for the news brief. Thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. Uh, Mukta Mohammed is a developmental economist. He joined us this morning as we look at, you know, the Naira and its appre appreciation and a depreciation as well. That's the size of it. If you missed that on any part of the conversation, it will be great to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. You can also uh, view us on uh, YouTube as well as at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Popo. Have a fantastic morning and join us at nine o'clock for the news brief.